I am Teacher Danica Gitubig, but you can call me Teacher Dan. Today we are going to have an activity about grammar chant. Are you excited? So I have listed here some common chants you can hear in the classroom. Let us read first with these chants. But please pay attention to the intonation and meaning of each chant because we are going to have an activity later. Alright? So first chant, not yet. In our native language, it means wala pa mahuman. Not yet or not yet. Next, thank you. Thank you in our native language means salamat or salamat. Right? So next chant, stop talking. Stop talking. In our native language, it means ayaw sa historia or punong sa historia. Next, yes. No. In our native language, it means oo o dili. Next. Are you listening? Are you listening? In our native language, it means naminaw ba ka? Or naminaw ba mo? Right? So, next chant. What does it mean? What does it mean? In our native language, it means unsay pasabot anak. Unsay pasabot anak. Right? So, next chat. That's not right. That's not right. In our native language, it means Dili mana mao. Wrong mana. Right? So, next chat. I don't understand. I don't understand. In our native language, it means Wala ko kasabot. Wala ko kasabot. So, next chat. What is the correct answer? What is the correct answer? So, in our native language, it means unsay correct na ante or unsay sa kung tubag. Alright. Okay, now let me group you into four groups. This side will be the group 1, the group 2, group 3, and group 4. So, look at the chats written on the board. The first column will be for the group 1, the second for the group 2, the third for the group 3, and the fourth for the group 4. Now, all you're going to do is to write these chunks in a bad paper and then um, write it as creative as you can. So, there will be a prize for the most creative output after this. So, make sure that the words can be read from afar, alright? So, are you ready? Okay? You can start it now. Okay, it seems like everyone is done, so pass your outputs in the front. So, I am going to paste this around our classroom. And if I will ask you something, you will point to the area which will be your answer to my question. Do you understand? Okay, for example, I will ask you, are you done class? So, you are going to point the not yet area. Is it clear? Alright, okay, let's start. Alright, so you seem enjoying the activity, didn't you? Okay, I am concluding that you understand our topic today. Very good, class. So, the advantages of using chunks in learning grammar is that it helps you, the students, in identifying keywords and ideas. And it develops your ability to paraphrase and makes it easier for you to organize and synthesize information. However, its disadvantages is it sometimes making you confused on how and when to use it, especially if you are monolingual, right? But I hope our activity helps you understand how to use checks. Thank you so much for the cooperation class. Till our next lesson. Goodbye for now. Students, my name is Anjali Huid, and today I'm going to have an activity about conjunctions. So the activity that we are going to do is a language bingo activity. Are you familiar with it? For those who are not familiar with it, this game is going to, or I am going to have a dice, dice in here, and I would roll it and you. And do the number that will be going to to point in it will be the one 
to come to me and answer it or answer it. And for those group, okay, actually I will group two. So for the group who have, will be or will be having the answers or not many answers will be going to have or will win this game. We should start from grouping you. Okay, I will count or for this game to be fairly a play. I will count you or I will count the students. I mean, so this class will be grouped into three groups. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, by the way, class, I already put in here injunction words that you are going to answer my questions. Or in my question. For those who are in group one, you will be occupying this area. And the second group is in here in the middle. And this right and this side is for the group three. You would form a line. Okay, form your line. grammar or grammar word but before that we have so much something to do so listen very well everyone so I'm going to read the paragraph student A just listened and I'm going to choose how to be a student A student B writes what they can and also I'm going to choose how will be the student B then in the first you reconstruct the paragraph and I'm going to read the paragraph again for that you can internalize it you can analyze it and in first all of you compare your writing students write paragraph on the paper to check their work or it will display the written paragraph I hope it's clear so so what are you going to do here since our lesson for today is all about um, content word or grammar word so you're going to elucidate what are the noun verb pronouns adjective adverb prepositions in the text that I'm going to read student A listen very well student B you're going to write and both student A and student B are cooperate with each other 
to elucidate the following content grammar are being used in the text that I'm going to read. Nouns mean verb, adjectives, and adverb are usually content words. Auxiliary verb, pronouns, articles, and prepositions are usually grammatical words. So, in other words, the student only listen and take notes of the words used as the lesson and the letter and later reconstruct the text so that it has the same meaning using the content word grammar as the original text although perhaps not exactly the same so in this class i'm going to divide you into two we have group one and group two the first and the second front seaters will be the student a who only listen and the rest are the student b who are going to be write something or to elucidate in a paragraph that I'm going to read. Remember, student A and student B are going to help each other to elucidate the text that I'm going to read. I hope it's clear. A luxurious elegant bar open near a church. The press of the church pray daily against the business. Days later, the bar was being struck by lightning and burned to ashes. Bar owner sued the church's priest and nun because he said the fire was the result of their prayer. The church denied all responsibility. So the judge commented, it's difficult to decide the case because here, we have a bar owner who believes in the power of prayer, an entire church that doesn't believe it. So student, I give you a lot of time to do such activities. But in continuation, I give you what is the advantages and disadvantages of content word or grammar word. Advantages Learning content grammar intensively can help the learners build their knowledge so they will be able to use the language eventually. Teaching grammar using a content helps students express themselves with more clarity. Students have already been exposed to the subject where they are able to create a basic sentence in content grammar. Disadvantages The content grammar word has been seen to be a quite huge problem. The English grammar accusation does not come naturally. Few can retain the knowledge for long and hardly anyone finds it very exciting. Difficulties in understanding the rules and also in using the appropriate patterns in sentence. And that's it for today, students. And let's see to the next meeting. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I am Geraldine B.S. Teliore from B.S. English Today. In this video, I have chosen to explain the word grammar activity number two which is the grammar poem. Grammar poem activity is designed to help the students to reinforce the grammar terms through creative writing. To demonstrate the grammar poem activity inside the classroom, the teacher must prepare first a poem rubric that contains a criteria, specifically a list of parts of speech that the students must follow in creating the poem. After the preparation of the rubric, write it on the board and explain, explain it to your students what it is all about. And make sure to tell them that in making their own title of the poem, it should be according to the given rubrics of the poem. After explaining the rubrics, the students shall start to create their own poem individually or by pairs. When the students are already done in making their poem, let them exchange it with their classmates and let them check 
if their classmates have followed the rubric correctly. The role of the teacher in this activity is to teach the students the proper usage of grammar terms through creating a poem with the guidelines for the students to use. And for the learners, the role in this activity is to self-discover. Discover their hidden skills in creative writing. The advantage of this activity is it will help the students or the learners to widen their mind for more knowledge about the grammar terms and the disadvantage of this activity is during the demonstration or making of the activity it might create pressure to the students who aren't knowledgeable enough about the grammar terms. Good morning, my dear students. I am Mary Johan Gonzaga Lagari from Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. Today, I am going to demonstrate about the grammar word brainstorm activity. But before that, let us know first what is brainstorming. So brainstorming, it is a large or small group activity that encourages students to focus on a topic and contribute to the free flow of ideas. So in this activity, the role of the teacher is to begin a brainstorming session. She may have to give a question or a problem or by introducing a topic to the student. Likewise, the students then express possible answers, relevant words, and ideas from the given question or the topic. So now I am going to divide you into three groups. This is the group 1, the group 2, and the group 3. Alright, so the topic that you are going to brainstorm is all about the action verbs brainstorming. Okay, so all you need to do is to give some words which is an action verb. And then I will give you 5 minutes to think as many action words as possible for each group. And then finally, the group with the most action verbs will be the winner. And after that, we will be having a review in every group's answers followed by a discussion on action verbs. Is it clear? Okay, very good. So, you may now proceed and the timer starts now. Right, so since you were all finished, let's review your output. So let's start with the group one. So the action verb words that they have are walk, stomp, waddle, jump, run, and review. So they only have six words. And we have here the group two. So the words that they have is jog, play, hop, eat. Climb, fly, clock, swim. So they have eight action verb words. So let's proceed to the group three. So they have stand, sing, cry, dance, and fight. So they have only five words. So the winner is the group two since they have the most action verb words. Okay, congratulations to group two. Um, everybody, please give a hand to the group too. And please give a hand to each group as well. Very good. Alright, so let's have a recap. Okay, based on your previous activity, what does the action verb mean? So an action verb describes an action that a person, animal, or process in nature can do. So, the advantages of brainstorming is it creates opportunities to explore each other's ideas and it often generates more ideas in a short period of time. Um, also, it has disadvantages in which some participants are more quiet and don't like to speak spontaneously in groups. Hello, my dear students. For today, I am Teacher Prab conducting an activity entitled Inflection Greet. But before that, 
I just want to hear if are you ready? Oh, amazing! It seems that all of you are so excited. This activity will encourage you to work out and identify inflected forms from attacks. Okay, class, eyes in here. In the board, I prepared a chart. First, everyone, please read the chart loudly. Again, please read number one. The bowling balls black rolls rolled rolling down the lanes. Number two, the frog is black jumps jumped jumping into the log. Number three, I belong opens opened opening the book to my favorite page. Number four, eat the ice cream quickly before it black melts melted melting. Number five, the kite is black flies flight flying high in the sky. Okay, number six. It's black. Rains, rained, raining all weekend. Number seven. Kevin, look at Alex who was black. Brushes, brush, brushing his teeth. Number eight. The art teacher black opens, opened, opening two boxes of pink before class. Number nine, my storeroom is full of blank. Boxes, box, boxy. Number ten, every morning Mark blank watches, watch, watching the news. So okay, we're done reading. So for this activity, I want you to get a whole sheet of paper. Again, a whole sheet of paper and copy what the chart is provided. In this activity, I want you to fill out to create, identify the correct answer given and complete the sentences. Take note. In answering, please keep silent. If you're done, please pause it in front. Okay? Your time starts now. Taking into account, I'm preparing my question. I use the word that includes the text that is lexical verb. An example of this is brushes brushed brushing which are the main verb that show the action or state that's it thank you everyone good day my dear students how are you today so yes very good so today will be more greater because our topic will be about Word grammar activity. Yes, you're right. So, are you excited? Mm, are you ready? Yes, very good. So, let's get started. So, I'm going to um, explain, demonstrate to you the um, one of the word grammar activity, which is, who can guess? Okay, so the do it yourself conquer dancing activity. So the do it yourself conquer dancing activity. Oh, could someone give me an idea about it? No. So okay. So in conquer dancing activity, do it yourself. Um, we would be able to determine the words that has the repeated list of the words which are present in a text or passage yes you're right so when we say repeated it can be seen repeated it can be seen in every sentences of the paragraph text or stories yes you're right so 
it will show the multiple uses. Yes, you're right. Of a certain grammar, words, and it was being used in a sentence. You're right. So, a grammar word that was repeated in the sentence or a passage. So, if we've seen, um, I'm gonna give you an example word example so that you will a be able to understand further what is do it yourself concordancing so uh, listen carefully i really enjoy myself watching television it really entertains me a lot because the movie was really good and it really gives learnings to the viewers so what is the repeated word there yes you're right it is really so really is the word grammar that is being repeated in each passage or sentences you're right so as you can see um, in that passage the word really was repeatedly being used into different functions so one of the examples of really above uh, the example are followed by a pronoun then two of that examples are followed by a verb and one of that example are followed by adjective yes you're right so and and you and in every word which it was being followed the really words was ha, or have the different uses and functions according to what the word was being followed by it so did you get what is do it yourself concord concordancing in the word grammar activity very good so thank you and god bless Hi kids, I am teacher Devora, and today we will be learning count and classify. But before we start our lesson, let's have an energizer first. Are you energized, kids? Great! So now, let's start our lesson. When we classify objects, we sort them into different sets by following a rule. For this example, we can classify objects by their color. Here we have a set of red fish and not red fish. And we can sort this fish by their colors following the rule that all red fish go on the left side and all not red fish go on the right side. Let's start. This fish. What color is this? Great. Yellow. So now we will put it on the not red side. Next. This fish. What color is this? Great. Red. So it will go on the red side. This fish is color red, and so it will also go in the red side. What about this fish? It's color blue. Excellent! So now it will go on the not red side. What about this fish? Very good! It's color green, and so it will go on the not red side. What about this one? Very good, it's blue, so it will go on the not red side. What about this fish? Excellent, it's yellow, so it will go on the not red side. What about this fish? Great, it's red, so it will go on the not red side. So now we have classified the fishes into their respective colors. On the red side, how many fish do you see? 
Great! It's three. On the not red side, how many fish do you see? Great! It's five. Now that you learn count and classify kids, please answer this worksheet and pass it on my FB Messenger. Good day students, I am teacher Ginard and I am your teacher for today. So yesterday I asked you guys to bring your dictionary. So did you bring one? Yes, very good. So before we start our lesson for today, I would like you to look at these paragraphs. So, as you can see, there are missing words in each paragraph. So, the task here is that I want you to find that missing word using your own dictionaries. And reminder, there are only one word that is missing in these paragraphs. I will give you 30 seconds to identify the missing word. So, open your dictionaries and start looking for the missing word. Time's up. So, I want to know what word have you decided? So, Mr. Santiago, what is the missing word? Own. Okay. What about you, Miss? Willows, um, what word did you find that suits the missing word in these paragraphs? Um, own, same as Mr. Santiago. So, the missing word in this paragraph, guys, is own. So, Mr. Santiago and Miss Willows got it right. So, to move on, let's start on our topic for this day. I want you guys to group yourselves into three and make sure that each group will have their own dictionary with them because we are going to do dictionary grammar so are you guys ready so let's start so as what we have done earlier I want each of the group to construct their own paragraphs I want you to make paragraphs and make sure to leave space for your own missing word then you will present your paragraphs here in front and let the other group guess what is the missing word and same as to the other team so time's up Group 1, kindly paste your paragraphs here at the front. Okay, so this is the paragraphs of group 1. So group 2, I will give you 30 seconds to identify the missing word on group 1's paragraphs. Your time starts now. Time's up! So group 2, what is the missing word of group 1's paragraphs? Great. Oh. Group 1. Group 2 says that the missing word on your paragraphs is great. Is it right or not? Yes, it is right. Good job, group 2. And now, it's time for group 2 to paste your paragraphs here in front okay same as what the group 2 did group 1 please prepare dictionaries and guess the missing words on group 2's paragraphs your time starts now time's up so Group 1, what is the missing word of Group 2's paragraphs? Create. Oh, uh, so we answered create. Group 2, is create right or wrong? good group one so the correct answer is 
for eight. And that ends our activity for today, which is dictionary grammar. I hope you learned something. I hope you have you had fun and see you soon. So the advantage of this word grammar activity is that the students will be able to learn more about different words in a dictionary and also it will add up on their vocabulary knowledge. Um, with this newly discovered words, they, uh, their vocabulary will be at good state. On the contrary, the disadvantage of this word grammar activity is that, is that the students will be dependent on the dictionary itself. They, um, their critical thinking skills will be lessened because they will depend on the dictionary. They will not try to think what is the appropriate word on the paragraphs. In conclusion, this type of word grammar activity is best for kids. I believe it is best for them, for them to train their vocabulary and for them to discover more words they can use in the future purposes. Thank you.